So, oh, yeah. so let's talk about their their requirements. And I, I'd love to know the theories behind why the ants are something they need, or if there if there's an answer to that, I'd be curious to know, or what, what are some of the suggestions that people say that are the reason for that? And then we'll get into how you're actually accomplishing this. There's a easy answer and a more elaborate one. The easy answer would be, okay, ants are more available, even under the harshest conditions. Um, the more elaborate is that they evolve around ants. There's this persisting um, urban legend that they would eat their ants to um, regulate their stomach acidity to counteract um, parasites, or they need the acidity to um, regulate all sorts of internal organs, something like that, but that's completely wrong. We know from research that um, a lot of ants in the native range all um, don't produce any um, acid. It's more about other contents of the ant, um, like ants are rich in fiber, calcium, protein. They have no carbohydrates. They contain about 584 amino acids and albumin, which is in blood serum responsible for transporting fatty acids and calcium and also binding toxins. The problem um, with ants is that um, because they have no carbohydrates and um, horned lizards don't need a long period of rest like crocodilians after a large meal, um, they need to eat a lot more. So they developed a stomach that's a, that's about thirteen percent larger compared to other lizards. Interesting, w- which is really a fascinating adap- adaptation for a, a reptile, considering that yeah. typically the, they're used to a much slower metabolism and they can get away with eating a lot less. And I obviously there have been people in the past who have acquired these and then attempted to not feed them ants. What happens when that when when they go about that? They die. They simply die. You can think of it um, if they are not have if they are not having a proper diet, they will get all sorts of sicknesses. Um, you can also think of uh, think of a horn lizard like a diabetical species. They need ants to also pr- uh, um, process other food because of some sorts of the ants. Um, the problem with common feeder insects is that they have a widespread thin chitinous layer and carbohydrates. And the calcium phosphor balance is way off. So if they are fed a continuous diet with the wrong, with most likely wheel, mealworms or um, or crickets, they will get um, kidney failure, liver failure, and they die. And um, they can't process the, the fatty acids or the chitin. Right. It, it you're is you're really... forcing them. Yeah, yeah, you're just forcing them to do the to to eat a yeah. diet that they're actually not adapted to, and it, it's so fascinating because so many reptile species are quite general generalists when it comes to what they're able to eat. You know, s- yeah. snakes and and even lizards have a pretty wide prey variety that they can typically consume. So to find something that has, uh, assumably they're eating lots of different species of ants, but it's still within yeah. one band of of insect that they can eat. Yeah, they eat most likely um, harvester ants because it's the most common in North America, but they also have um, some sorts of species of, of different ants. The invasive um, fire ants, they only eat the queens if offered them, but um, it's also um, a problem with um, conservation over there because the fire ant also eats harvester ants, despite having the harvester ants, despite having um, one of the most potent toxins or venoms in, in the animal kingdom. Right. So, how do the does the does the venom affect the as they ingest these harvester ants? Does that affect the lizards at all? That's so genius. Um, we know um, from research that, um, of course, harvester ants have one of the most potent venoms in toxicology. The median lethal dose or LD fifty value is uh, something you can use to determine the toxicity of a given substance. Um, for harvester ants, the venom is so um, so well researched, we know um, we know that the LD50 factor is about one zero uh, point one two milligrams on a kilogram, which translates that twelve stings can kill a two kilogram wool red. Wow, wow, that's really potent. I I have um, a small colony of harvester ants. The pain is unbearable. I got stung by one. 
it's it's nothing I want to repeat in 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 terms of experience. But horned lizards have a blood factor in in serum that neutralizes um, the venom completely. And in terms of comparison of the red, they are about one thousand five hundred times more resistant to the venom than the red. Wow, because presumably they get bit all the time if they're you know, oh they get animal- stung and bit all the time. But they also have in in terms of swallowing, it's um, just one neutralization from outside. But overexposure will of course kill them. But from from the terms of eating, they developed such a unique way of disabling um, the ant's defensive mechanism itself. They have a sticky tongue, much like chameleons. And when they swallow the ant, they cover it in, in mucus. So they cover it, disable all the defensive mechanisms, and then gain the soluble um, nutrients and components of the abdomen of the ant. The thick chitinous layer, they can process, or, or it's no need to process, they throw it out. So that's how, um, in comparison, they need to about need to eat about two hundred ants to get on the same level as, um, for example, the colored lizard eating two locusts or crickets. Wow! So it's a lot more work. So how how do they acquire yeah. them in in the wild? Are they just sitting next to ant hills and digging through them? Yeah, exactly. You can find um, horned lizards most likely around or in the surroundings of of ant hills. That's also a way why um, that's also um, um, in terms of evolution, that's why they um, developed su- such um, secretive behaviors. Um, because ants are way farther out in terms of their um, in terms of of exposure in in the heat than other invertebrates. So they had to uh, find ways to um, sit on an anthill and literally lick those ants out without getting caught by predators. Mm. That's why they developed those um, tank-like bodies and be able to uh, blend in with the surroundings. So, um, And they are more resistant to heat than other lizards, for example. So they can have uh, longer exposure levels in the sun while eating their food. That's incredible. I mean, when you think about the evolutionary process, it's obviously it's a chicken versus the egg situation, but yeah. you have this animal that's sort of committing to eating ants and the rest of its body is adapting to make that continue to happen, you know, in yeah. in, in in response to incredibly hot heat and predator or yeah, predators that could just come pluck them off the anthill. They develop all these weapons to allow them to continue to gorge 200 ants a day. Yeah, the whole lizard is adapted. It's it's almost like they are over-engineered. Yeah. Even if they get spotted, they have a lots, lots more of um, defensive mechanisms. Um, some sorts of horned lizards can shoot blood out of their eyes, mm. which is uh, most like, uh, which is mostly a uh, defensive mechanism uh, mechanism against uh, canine predators. They can puff up themselves and make them bigger. They can also make them extremely flat and 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 play dead. And if they get swallowed, they even have the horns. Right. So the um, they were found um, road roadrunners were dead with a horned lizard in the in the throat, pierced by the horns. Wow. So yeah, they're not an appetizing meal for most predators. Absolutely not. They are so adapted in the rhyme that it's incredible. That that is really amazing. So you know you had mentioned that they actually won't eat fire ants, which are invasive and are slowly mm-hmm. taking over the harvester ants. So when you first started working with them, you said you were surrounded by ants outside, but I guess it's not really a slam dunk that they're going to eat the ants that are native to you. D- d- yeah. Was it was was it pretty much they took to them right away or did you have to work on introducing that specific ant species to them as a diet? Um, they usually take all ants I offer them, but I also have to make research on the ants itself because I have to find... Um, some sorts of different ants um, that match the um, nutrients, the nutrient level for the harvester ants or what, what their evolutionary needs is. Um, the problem I had at first is when I introduced ants to them, I just put them in a small bowl and they were scattering around um, this, um, the enclosure, so they were pretty scared at first. That's when I started to develop um, those ant feeders. Um, first, I put in a small uh, um, flower pot. They usually have this um, this hole for drainage on, on the underside and put that over the ants. So not all ants um, get out immediately. That's 
when I was first trying to replicate an anthill from the wild, I was also try um, try to introduce um, something like the yellow meadow ant, which is pretty common around here. It's an ant that lives mostly most uh, most of the time un under under the surface, so it's more um, more adapted to um, more more. Um, it's more calm. So it was gotcha. not scurrying around and, and scaring the ants. So the first time introducing ants to the actual horned lizard, it was tough, but I made it through. Yeah, I can only imagine. Uh, if for me, when I feed crickets, I just get annoyed at how easy they can be to escape. And yeah. they, but they're so large and they're easy to find, and you know they make a noise, so you go see them. But I can only imagine what it would be like to like throw a bunch of ants into an enclosure and just watch them infest the place. Yeah, my wife don't likes it. Um, <laughs> last night we found uh, one of the ants at uh, crawling at uh, at the uh, um, ceiling, and she was giving me the looks. Yeah. Also, um, why I would need to make new enclosures <laughs> to keep them because, ant proof. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to keep them ant proof. Um, also, ants that are not in the enclosure not get eaten, which throws off my whole uh, my whole diet plan. Right. So, so you you have. It sounds like you have a, a group of ants that you're working with and culturing on your own. And then do you still wild collect your ants? Yeah. And even if you aren't, yeah. so can you tell us that process? And then we'll get into the ones that you're culturing. How, how do you go out and, it, it seems pretty obvious, you probably just scoop them up, but is there a tactic that you use? Um, yeah, I have different tactics on different ants. Um, most ants that live un underneath, I can just take a shovel and, and bucket and sort them out. Um, then there are ants that are more um, aggressive um, in terms of intro, um, intervening in, in the daily cycle. So I have um, make, made uh, a vacuum cleaner. It's, it's a hand cleaner with, um, with a small jar on it and, and, and a valve that can sub, suck up the ants and then um, introduce them into the enclosure, which also is, um, is preferable to me because I don't have to um, um, collect the the earth itself right and destroy so, the ant barrel yeah yeah that way yeah you probably feel a little bit less guilty you can just yeah. uh, suck them up and but if if they have to eat so many ants a day how are you are you constantly is this like a daily thing that you have to go outside and and yeah. collect ants or you do it every day i um, right now i do it every day because it's still a little bit cold outside and my animals woke up earlier than expected in summer i can usually go once a week but horn lizards are a species you have to dedicate and yourself to it because you're most of the time in the summer you're out collecting ants. <laughs> and if you, for example, have other species beside that, you're also, for example, a monitor. You have also um, a play with the monitor to have it um, mentally stable. It's something I never can keep besides of horn lizards, but I am also not interested in keeping monitors. Mm. Yeah, but that that is the commitment level. It is something yeah, that this exactly. is only something a reptile keeper would do. By the way, it's just commit to like a forever ant collection. Um, during um, New Year's Eve, they woke up because we had we had a warm spell. So I was um, out there minus ten degrees, scooping up ants fifty centimeters under under the surf uh, surface. Wow! So I, I, I assume by your home, there's like a place that you regularly go to. I have multiple places because I won't over. I, um, I don't want to over collect because it's something I need to do for at least uh, 50, 60 years in terms of how long I actually live. <laughs> so I have different places of um, where I can uh, scoop ants out, and then I usually go to one place a year. Or if we are on a road trip, I collect ants there too. And I also have a friend um, which. Uh, runs uh, an end store here in Germany, so he can also give me some um, here and there from his big leaf cutter colonies, mm. and I also breed them myself. But so, it's, yeah, when you it's, bring the wild caught ones inside, are those go going immediately into enclosures to be fed, or do you put them in con cont containers and keep them for a while before feeding them? Um, I usually go out with with a couple of containers. Um, there are the uh, those droso um, drosophila. Um, um, fruit fly containers with the lid and the mesh. I usually use them because sometimes I have way um, smaller ants um, than others, and they can immediately get out if I have a, a larger spread mesh. 
So I usually, uh, usually have them and keep them in the crawl space I have on the side. Um, so they're a little bit cooler and, and hold out longer. Gotcha. So then let's talk about the ones that you actually breed and culture yourself. Mm-hmm. What species is that and how do you, how do, you do that? Um, I have a couple of ant farms um, and most like um, the most I breed are the um, European harvester ant because I want to give them the opportunity, uh, opportunity to have a similar diet as in the wild. And I also have um, the red harvester ant, Pogonomum barbatus, but those colonies are um, two years in and they are really slow in, in producing uh, workers. They, uh, they eventually get really big. But those first three or four years are I'm um, just keeping and breeding them. And on occasions or when I'm not able to go out, I um, usually pick up from those farms and introduce them to my home lizard. Gotcha. And then you, you'd already mentioned sort of simulating an ant hill in the enclosure, but the ant yeah. feeder now seems like you've kind of nailed it. Can you describe that to people who maybe who are just listening, what that how that functions and how the lizards respond to it? I usually strive for a minimal interaction setup, which I think is the best way to keep reptiles. Um, I also don't like uh, the enclosures. The, um, the animals can always see me and, and are distracted. So my way over the years, um, I had different prototypes and now we have our own place and I can do as I will. I um, put in the enclosures and stuff in the place and drill the hole from outside, feeding, um, um, attaching a container which I um, which I smeared over the lid with talcum powder so the ants can get out, and are forcing to get over the hose inside into my actual ant feeder, which I used for years. In this container, the only way out is over the um, over the stick, and that's simulating the ant hill, and their response to it is um, exceptional because I was able through that ant feeder. And they're not seeing me actually putting the food in it to um, see natural behavior. They are way calmer, way more um, occupied. And oh, yeah. it's something I am, um, from the video, I already got responses from hepatologists who actually live in that area and, and say what I do is nearly that what they see in the wild. But even then I'm not satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make it way more like the actual desert. How, how, do you have an idea of how you might do that? Oh yeah, I actually planned out, um, we are right now fixing the roof, so um, all of the rooms are um, in, in renovation. But after that, I built new enclosures 